Franklin Thompson Mathias, the 13th of March 1908 to the 3rd of December 1993, was an American civil engineer who directed construction of the Hanford nuclear site, a key facility of the Manhattan Project during World War II. A graduate of the University of Wisconsin-Madison, Mathias joined the Tennessee Valley Authority (TVA) as a junior hydraulic engineer in 1935 and worked on hydroelectric projects. In April 1941, he was called to active duty by the United States Army, and joined the Construction Division of the Army Corps of Engineers. He was area engineer at the Manhattan Project's Hanford site from 1942 to 1945. As such, he supervised the enormous construction effort, which included three chemical separation plants so large that they were known as Queen Mary's, and the world's first three production-scale nuclear reactors. After the war Mathé went to Brazil, where he helped build a hydroelectric facility. He joined the Aluminum Company of Canada in 1951, and was involved in the construction of its Kamano Kitimat Hydroelectric Dam and Aluminum Smelter Project in northern British Columbia and the Chute des Passes Project in Quebec. He was a vice president at Kaiser Engineering from 1960 to 1973. Early life. Franklin Thompson Mathias was born in Glidden, Wisconsin, on 13 March 1908, the son of Franklin Herman Mathias and Christina Thompson. He had two older brothers, Harold and Norman, and a younger brother, Carl. In 1928 he became an instructor in topographical and hydraulic engineering at the University of Wisconsin-Madison, from which he received his Bachelor of Science BS degree in Civil Engineering in 1931, and his Master of Science MS degree in Civil Engineering in 1933. While there he joined the Reserve Offices Training Corps ROTC. In 1930 and 1931 he was editor of the Wisconsin Engineer, and president of the University YMCA. He was a member of Tau Beta Pi, Phi Kappa Phi and Scabbard and Blade, and was a national officer of Chi Epsilon from 1931 to 1942. On 1 August 1933, Matthias married Rava Baumgarten, a fellow graduate of the University of Wisconsin, who taught speech therapy in schools in Beloit, Wisconsin. In 1935 he was hired by the Tennessee Valley Authority TVA as a junior hydraulic engineer, and worked on hydroelectric and hydraulic problems and on construction, planning and plant design. He left the TVA in 1939, and spent a year working with a contractor on dredging the Tennessee River. In 1940 and 1941 he worked for the A. L. Johnson Construction Company, and on tunnels and aqueducts for the Dravo Corporation. World War II In April 1941, Matthias was called to active duty by the United States Army as a first lieutenant, and joined the construction division of the Army Corps of Engineers, where he received rapid promotion. On 14 December 1942, as a 34-year-old lieutenant colonel, he accompanied Colonel Kenneth Nichols to Wilmington, Delaware, to discuss the location of a proposed plutonium production plant with representatives of DuPont. At this point, Matthias had not yet been assigned to the Manhattan Project, whose mission was to build an atomic bomb, but he had worked on some special studies for it, and had worked with its director, Brigadier General Leslie R. Groves, Jr., on the construction of the Pentagon. He was already Groves's choice for area engineer for the plutonium project. Initially, the intention had been to locate the plutonium plant with the Manhattan Project's other production facilities at the Clinton Engineer Works in Oak Ridge, Tennessee, but concerns had arisen about the dangers of an atomic explosion, and Knoxville lay only 20 miles 32 kilometers away. A larger site was required where facilities could be separated from each other. It had to be in a sparsely populated but accessible area with access to abundant water and electric power. When he returned from the meeting, Matthias was met by Groves, who instructed him to take a survey team and find a suitable site. Matthias surveyed four sites in California and Washington, and chose the area around Richland, Washington. Matthias later recalled that, as far as my working relationship with DuPont was concerned, of course, we had differences from day one. I was fortunate that Gil Church and Walt Simon DuPont's project construction manager and operations manager were people I could deal with and respect, and we had a very good working relationship. 
I remember one time Granville Reed DuPont's assistant chief engineer called up Groves and said Matthias and Church were having a big argument about something and what should we do. Groves replied, Well, if those two guys don't have some arguments, then neither of them are worth a damn. Because of the isolation of the site, known as the Hanford Engineer Works, Matthias exercised more administrative autonomy than the Manhattan Project's other area engineers. The number of personnel assigned to his office grew to over 500 in 1944. Construction work commenced on the 400,000-acre site in April 1943. The size of the construction workforce eventually reached 44,900 in June 1944. Over 150,000 workers were employed at the site between 1943 and 1946. The scale of the task was enormous. Matthias supervised the construction of 554 buildings, 386 miles (621 kilometers) of roads, 158 miles (254 kilometers) of railroad track, three chemical separation plants, and the world's first three production-scale nuclear reactors. The 800-foot-long (240 meters) chemical separation plants, where the plutonium was separated from uranium slugs that had been irradiated in the reactors, were so large that they were known as Queen Mary's, after the ocean liner. Because the slugs were dangerously radioactive, the Queen Mary's had concrete walls 7 feet meters thick, and operations were by remote control. The first production batch of uranium slugs were dissolved at the separation plant on 26 December 1944, and in January 1945 Matthias personally couriered the first batch of plutonium nitrate to Los Angeles, where he handed it over to another courier, who took it to the Los Alamos laboratory. Plutonium from Hanford would be used in the Fat Man bomb used in the bombing of Nagasaki. For his wartime services, he was awarded the Distinguished Service Medal. <laughs> Later life Matthias left the army in 1946 and went to Brazil as a project manager for the construction for a hydroelectric facility, eventually becoming the manager of engineering at Brazilian Traction. Late in 1951 he joined the Aluminum Company of Canada Alcan as the project manager of engineering and construction of the Kamano Kitimat Hydroelectric Dam and Aluminum Smelter Project in northern British Columbia. In 1956 he moved to Montreal as its director of engineering, and worked on the Shoot Day Passes project. In 1960 he joined Kaiser Engineering in Oakland, California, as its Vice President for Heavy Construction and Hydroelectric Engineering, and was its Vice President of Transportation Projects from 1970 to 1973. He retired in 1973 at the age of 65. Matthias was a registered professional engineer in Wisconsin, California, Nebraska, Pennsylvania, and British Columbia. For some years after his retirement he remained active as a consultant, working for firms including Kaiser Engineering, Pacific Gas and Electric, Louisiana Pacific and Bechtel. He was a member of the advisory board of the California Water Resources Association, the Committee on Large Dams, Committee on Construction of Nuclear Facilities, and the American Society of Civil Engineers. He also wrote the chapter on construction services in the Handbook of Heavy Construction 1971. In 1993, he was informed that he had cancer of the lungs, liver and pancreas. He died 6 week later, on the 3rd of December 1993, at a nursing home in Walnut Creek, California. He was survived by his son Michael and younger brother Carl. His second wife, Mary Teresa Benderska, whom he had married on 29 October 1948, had died in 1986, and his daughter Gellin Christine had died in 1965. His papers are in the Hagley Museum and Library in Wilmington, Delaware. Topic notes Topic References Groves, Leslie 1962. Now It Can Be Told, The Story of the Manhattan Project. New York, Harper and Row. ISBN 0-306-70738-1. OCLC 537684. Jones, Vincent. 1985. Manhattan: The Army and the Atomic Bomb. PDF. Washington, D.C.: United States Army Center of Military History. OCLC 10913875. Retrieved the 25th of August 2013. Nichols, Kenneth. 1987. The Road to Trinity, a personal account of how America's nuclear policies were made. New York, Morrow. 
ISBN 0-688-06910-X. Rhodes, Richard The Making of the Atomic Bomb. London, Simon & Schuster. ISBN 0-671-44133-7. External links 1965 audio interview with Colonel Franklin Mathias by Stefan Gruff Voices of the Manhattan Project